Hello, amazing ladies. Welcome. All right, I am using totally new tech today, so I'm just gonna make sure that we are live, that this is recording. Just gonna check on my page here. All right, it looks like we are live. I hope the audio is okay. If someone's hopping on, if you could just let me know that you can hear me, that would be awesome. All right, here we go. So my name is Mireille Thériault. I go by Mireille Nicole in my coaching practice. I'm a relationship coach for women who are looking to up-level their love lives to the same standard they hold for their business. So what does that look like? That can be either applicable to you if you are divorced or separated, if you're married or in a relationship, but things are rocky or you just wanted to make the best that it can be out of it, or if you're single and you are ready for your happily ever after relationship. So. In today's video, we are going to talk about becoming ready to stop hiding behind your CEO title and start thriving in business with a supportive man. Because what's going on in your love life is directly connected to your business. And if you don't believe so, then this is a must watch for you. I am so excited about this topic. Let me know if you're watching. Say hi in the comments. I'm going to have a look here. I don't see the comments. Um, so let me know if you're here live or if you're catching the replay, doesn't matter either way, we are going to talk about some really important and life-changing information. I am just gonna go with it here, even though I don't see any comments here. And worst case, I'll just go back and answer later. So, all right, let's just dive in. So maybe this is you. You smash it into in your six or seven figure business or career, but your Tinder and blind dates suck. You either end up with men that treat you like a prized possession because you're the only successful one in the equation, or you magnetize the nice ones that you are not attracted to. Or maybe you're taken, but after all the coaching calls and the meetings every single day, you're the one cooking dinner and doing household chores late at night. And yes, you're expected to look sexy while doing so, or you place that expectation on yourself to try to fix things. Or maybe you only find yourself feeling your most authentic self when you're in your business and you spend a lot of time there. But at home, you constantly feel like you're walking on eggshells and you're not in your power. So if you wanna know how to change all of this in the next six weeks, make sure to watch all the way to the end of this video. So this is what we'll be covering today. Here's what we're gonna talk about. So number one, we're gonna talk about what high-level clients and high-level men have in common. And if you're successful, but single, successful, but doing everything yourself, or happily taken, but not successful, there is work to do. Number two, why my happily ever after method is not only giving you the love that you deserve, but also the business that you deserve. And number three, how I went from being broken business after divorce to smashing it as an entrepreneur and marrying my dream man. And if I can do it, then so can you. Let's start with what is a high level man anyway? You might be asking yourself, how the heck are high level men and high level clients connected to each other? And the answer I'm gonna give you is probably not what you expect it to be. Here's what most high-level men are not. Of course, there can be unicorns out there, but for the most part, they are not perfect. They are not mind readers. They are not pro communicators most of the time. Not great at intimacy beyond the physical part right away or most of the time. And I could go on and on here, but that's not the point. What I want you to remember is here's what they actually are. Number one, they hit you at your deepest desire beyond your rational mind, and we'll talk about that a bit later, and they dance with you. And I mean this figuratively, of course. And I know it's a cliche in the relationship world to use that to describe relationships, but it's a great way for you to visualize how it works. And I want you to think of dancing as growing. High-level people, all types of high-level people, are the ones that are open to growth. Or they might not even be aware of it yet, but they grow with you. How often do you hear coaches say this, right? Clients resign with them and they're on the journey together, 
both the coach and the client are growing. And it's the same thing in high caliber love. And both in love and in coaching, you help bring out the best in the other person. You're the man's partner in the dance. By being you, being the best version of yourself, and by mastering very specific relationship skills, we'll talk more on that later. Okay, so this is what you're actually looking for. This is how you get the man that supports you in your business, even if he doesn't understand every single detail of being an entrepreneur, he gets it. This is how you get the man that helps you out taking care of the kids and household chores. This is how you get the man who wants to spend time with you connecting. And by that, I don't mean just sitting side by side watching TV or your iPhones. This is how you get the man that opens up to you and communicates and can be vulnerable. All right, this is how you get the man that is totally magnetized to you and keeps coming back. You each get to do your own things, but there's a strong bond there. Because at the end of the day, think about it. You're not only a CEO or a successful corporate woman. And I know a lot of us think that way subconsciously, maybe, right? We put a lot of emphasis on our financial success, but you're also maybe a mother and you're a woman of emotions and needs and desires and dreams. We're all of it. I remember when I started my business and was dating my dream man, who is now my husband, by the way, we were at the point where we were not dancing anymore, right? And because I had no idea how relationships and businesses work together, I started at look, looking at these two aspects of my life separately. I believe that if I reached a certain level of success in my business, all of a sudden things would get better. He would start becoming more supportive of my business because I would have lots of financial success attached to it. But what ended up happening is there got to be more and more distance between us. This is because I compartmentalized my business and my love life. And the more down I felt in my relationship, the less energy I had for my business and the more I used it as an excuse to not show up. And no matter how hard I tried, this got reflected in my cash results because it's all interconnected at the end of the day. And also I started feeling like I was growing a lot faster than he was because of all of the coaching and personal development I was doing for myself. The stuff that helped me, but not our relationship. And that's key here, right? I hear from a lot of women who reach out, who are doing all this personal development stuff and it's helping them, but not so much the relationship. And then they look at the man and they see the man not growing and they wonder what's going on. We'll talk a bit more about that later. It wasn't until I addressed what was going on in love that I could fully thrive in my business because intimacy, communication, true self-care are all also business skills. Now let's talk about why my happily ever after method is not only giving you the love that you deserve, but also the business that you deserve. I want you to picture yourself here. You're the high achiever. You're the CEO of your life. You're all about smashing your goals in your business and in your career, but you're still eating every meal at home alone or taking trips with girlfriends only, or you feel like you're settling in your current relationship. You can't really communicate with your partner. He doesn't get what you're doing in your business or your career, and you're growing on a personal development a lot faster than he is. Okay. If this is you, don't worry, you can level up your love life to the standards of your cash goals. In fact, you get more when you combine the two. I want you to look at the Melanie Ann Layers, the Catherine Zenkinas, the Jenna Kutchers, the Stephanie Ann Hewsons of the world. They did not put their businesses first. You are as captivated by their love life as you are by their seven to eight figures and lavish lifestyles. I'm sure you sometimes wonder how they're both achieving these areas, success in these areas at the very same time, right? You see their men on their feeds and then their stories. They know what's going on. They know this is the secret. And you also deserve a supportive partner that won't let you go anywhere, even if you mess up big time. For example, you spent money on a coaching program and you didn't get the massive results you were hoping for immediately or, or at all. Oh, this is my favorite is going to check here. I still can't see any comments. Let me look at my phone here. I just want to make sure that everything is okay before I get too far. 
All right, it looks like we're good. So I let you look at this picture for a little while. So, you know, the great movies with their huge drama and their heartache and their happily ever afters, they make you dream about your own knight in shining armor. Well, this was me with Pride and Prejudice, and I had my big fantasy about having my own Mr. Darcy one day and his relationship with Elizabeth and him being all mysterious and me wondering, does he like me? Does he not like me? And his dramatic moods and whatnot. And, you know, that lasted for quite a while in my life, but then reality hits you, right? Everyone else around you seems to be in their happily ever after relationship, but you're left wondering if your knight in shining armor got lost somewhere along the way. And I know that was me for a while. Or you find someone along the way that probably wouldn't have made it into your happily ever after movie, but your family and your friends approve. And you both fit perfectly into that box of what society expects of you. What happens then is you find yourself and in a relationship or a marriage that appears fine or feels amazing in the beginning, but the flame fizzles out. You know, when we talk about that honeymoon phase that, that disappears after a while, or you don't have the same vision and then you feel let down because it doesn't meet your expectations. You don't have the same goals. So you find yourself sacrificing what you really want to be doing. You don't have the support you need for your business or career. He doesn't get your business or your high ambitions, why you're spending so much time and money on coaching and isn't really interested in talking about it either, right? Or maybe you find yourself bossing him around all the time or you feel like you're mothering another child. You walk on eggshells when it comes to how you feel and what you need. And you find yourself sometimes maybe daydreaming about past relationships or other men that got away. Or finally, maybe you feel like you're settling and you can't make a powerful decision when it comes to whether you should stay or you should go. And I end up finding myself in a lot of these statements. And these are some of the statements I hear from a lot of women who reach out to me. So this did not work for me. I remember that moment when I looked into that full length mirror and decided I would change my life completely. It took all but five minutes to do so. And I discovered that your happily ever after is actually a combination of both the romantic movie and reality. I wanted to have a thriving business and a partner that would support me long-term in my vision for love and success. I know a lot of you think this is a ton of work or might be a ton of work, right? And that's why I hear a lot of women who say, okay, I'm just not, I can't think about that right now. I really want to achieve a certain level in my business first. It's maybe love seems to be like a distraction and you're just already doing so much work in your business. But consider this, and I'm sure you must have heard this before, right? How you do one thing is how you do most things. So it's never about doing more work. And that's also the truth when it comes to your love life. What we want to do and what we do in my happily ever after method is stop doing the work that is not giving you the results, both in love and in business. And there's an easy way to change this for you. It's faster than you think. So let me share some of it with you. So let's talk about how I changed this, how I went from being broke in business after divorce to smashing it as an entrepreneur and marrying my dream man. Number one, you need to know the one thing that only you bring to the love table, to the relationship. Now people think that it's all about their personality or character traits. They're nice, caring, fun, outgoing. They do everything for other people. But who here has great personality traits, but still attracts no partner or a, a toxic partner or is still unfulfilled in their marriage? You don't have to answer, just answer in your mind. What happened with me is that post-divorce, when I was dating my dream man, I was able to attract him, attract him. I had great personality traits, right? But I did not know the one thing that only I could bring to the relationship. So after a while, because I was not connected to this, I started feeling very insecure. I wasn't getting the safety feeling that I was special in the relationship. And this is when I started worrying and I went into straight on fixing mode, which made things worse, by the way. 
This was also being reflected in my business because I felt like I was just like any other coach out there and I was showing up from this mind space. I was posting the same type of content as everyone. I was doing the same strategies as other coaches and I thought I needed to do all of that, right? But when you know the one thing you bring to the relationship that no one else can, you will take care of yourself differently. You'll take responsibility differently and men will start to see you differently also. And how does this look in your business? If you can see yourself as that six figure mentor first, your clients can start seeing you this way also. So you might think you have to grow an audience or go on a thousand dates because you feel like the right client or the right man is just not there right now, but that's not true. You just can't see him because you're disconnected from yourself. So let's dig a little deeper on this. So what happens is that when we don't know what's special about us, we feel insecure. And like I said, we go into fixing mode. The dynamic in the relationship evolves in a way that makes you unhappy. Ironically, you see yourself as caring, but then the man walks all over you and hurts your feelings, which also makes him unhappy actually, because men at the very essence of them, they want to make you happy. They want to know that they can make you feel good. And how this shows up in your business, well, you see it as your clients not resigning, right? So this is where we start going off track. We start confusing our great personality traits with unhealthy behaviors in love. So we think we're being carry, caring, but actually this is people pleasing. Or we think we're being nice, but we're actually putting ourselves last or we're just unable to assert what we really need, which is hard to do when you don't know what you truly need or who you truly are. So do you see where the confusion can lie here? You can also start confusing intimacy with codependency. You can start confusing self-care with distancing. So these are all behaviors that without the proper awareness, you can fall into that trap. How this shows up in your business or career? Well, you start only copying what everyone else is doing. You do more posts, more master classes, more lead generation, but you get little or no results. Your clients don't resign. They go elsewhere, just like the men. Okay, but how do we change this? You can change this. It always comes back to how you see yourself, how you see yourself in relationships with others. So whether this is men or your clients, how do you know if this is happening to you? The reflection can be found in the men that you attract and the clients that you attract. So take a good look after this call, really reflect on this and look at your interaction with different people in your lives, whether again, whether it's your, your man, your clients, or even just your family, your friends or whatnot. How we do one thing is how we do most things, right? But fortunately, you get to teach the man how to give you the feeling of being special, of being his number one, without being bossy and mothering, of course. And you, in general, teach others how to treat you, including in business. Number two, you have to be the woman that sees beyond the man. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? So this is how most people think attraction works. You simply have to find someone that meets your criteria. So they believe it's either consciously or subconsciously. It's about using their head or their logic. A lot of times we use that over our hearts. So I don't know if you've ever done this, but you write down a list of all the personality traits that your partner, your perfect partner has and or you seek approval, right, of your partner or of your partner with your friends or family. So I don't know if you've ever done this. I know I've done this. I've done the list. So let me know in the comments if this is, if you can relate, if you've done this also. But there's a catch, all right? You can only write down what you think you want and what you think you need approval of, right? The conscious belief that if others approve, you're making the right choice. This all comes from your conscious mind. However, what you truly need for a fulfilling relationship takes place in the subconscious. Remember when I talked about that deep desire earlier on? This is what I'm talking about. This is partly what I'm talking about. So when you fall into this trap of really being in your conscious mind, when it comes to love, this is what can start happening, okay? You start making decisions in love based on what you think you need, what makes sense for the life you desire, the approval of other people, of course. And I'm sure you've seen this, right? Or you've maybe experienced it yourself where you know those relationships where 
They kind of get boring or troubled after six months, even though the person met every single point on the list. Or you can find yourself in a situation where your partner starts feeling more like your friend than your lover. And this is what's going on. Like I see, said earlier, you're operating from your conscious mind and we need to go deeper in your subconscious. And what's also happening or can be happening is you're seeing the man from the perspective of where you are now in the relationship. So this kind of goes back to this whole point here of seeing beyond the man. And when I was talking about earlier on being able to, to, to dance, which influences the harmony and the dynamic in the relationship. So you want to be looking at him, not from the perspective um, you're not looking at him from the perspective of what you want it to be, right? Let me start that over. So you see the man from the perspective of where you are now in the relationship, not from the perspective of where you want to be. So instead of what can be created with that fire you feel for someone inside. Or you create expectations that become impossible for the man to meet, right? Or that constantly let you down. Or you can't see the man that's already right there in front of you. Just like you can't see the dream clients ready to pay you 5k in full in your current audience. Right? Other ways this shows up in your business or career. Like someone who does 5k months right now. But isn't able to picture 20 plus k months. Because they're stuck in the conscious mind. The physical realm. And all they can see is related to the physical. Just like you have a laundry list of expectations for your man, you have one for your clients, for your results, for the endless milestones that you have in your business. And to a certain extent, that is fine, right? But it's when we get stuck at a certain level, we really want to look at this, right? Or if we're stuck in love, not attracting what we desire, not feeling fulfilled. How we change this? We change this by accessing your subconscious mind by reconnecting to your intuition and trusting. And I don't mean just blind trust. I mean from doing the work and experiencing results and being able to change those patterns, right? Also asking if this man is a match to your vision, right? And like I said, it's also about seeing beyond the man to see your role in the relationship. So he can lead you like the man you desire. So going back to this visualization of the dance, about seeing him as your partner. And of course, if there are going to be, like I said earlier, there are going to be toxic men out there. There are going to be men for which, when they're showing you your tr their true colors, believe them. Believe them. But if you are stuck in your old patterns, your trauma, your unhealed wounds, you're going to have a hard time really exposing the extent of the toxicity, right? Or being able to see if he's the narcissist, the toxic relationship, well, the toxic man or if it's the relationship that's toxic in the sense of not dancing correctly together. So when you are in your power, dancing, understanding the relationship skills and the dynamic, you will see right away. You'll see right away if this man is hopeless, so to speak, hopeless, poor man, or he'll be repelled, right? The toxic man will be repelled by you because you are in your power and he won't be able to lead you in the dance, right? Okay. So it's also about seeing the man, beyond the man, like I said, and this happens in your business also. It's about seeing the potential of your audience, the potential, the results of your clients and your business overall. So seeing the potential in people. But like I said, if there are flat out red signs, I'm not saying to disregard those at all, at all. All right, I still don't see any comments here. I just wanna make sure we're good. Number three, last but not least, you must reverse engineer how you're showing up in your love life right now. How many of you here have the same arguments or issues over and over again with your partner? I know that was me with my dream man. Just because you're with your dream man doesn't mean some of these things won't come up, right? If you're with your dream man, and you're not dancing and growing properly in the ideal way, these things are gonna come up no matter how perfect he is, right? So you start wondering, this makes you wonder, if only he'd be a better communicator, if only he was more focused on his personal development. When you don't know the one thing only you can bring to the relationship, when you don't see beyond the man, and now when you can't see your patterns in the relationship or your business, this is what starts happening. 
the honeymoon phase passes. Just like in your business, when you start dipping back in your business, going from 10K months to 0K months, or your partner starts feeling more like a friend than a lover, just like potential clients are popping into your DMs asking how you're doing instead of asking you for the sale. So some of the patterns that show up, especially for high achieving women that I see a lot are trying to do everything on your own, right? A lot of times we're groomed to do that. And especially with this whole feminist world, and I'm saying that with all the loving words I can, right? With loving, with loving vibe, we get into this, a lot of us have developed this pattern of really going into the masculinity, right? and using that as our power. So, and we try to do everything on our own and this is gonna create distance in the relationship. There are ways of being in your power and achieving without doing this, right? While still having the ideal dynamic in your relationship. Or you find yourself just controlling instead of receiving. So again, this fall back, it falls back into this whole feminine masculine energy conversation. So when you're controlling everything, you're trying to even trying to fix things um, you're, you're in your very masculine energy and that's going to throw off the balance of the harmony in, in love. And it's also what's going to cause burnout in your business, right? So we see that you, you'll see a lot of entrepreneurs who talk about really working hard for these, these launches, really going into the masculine energy. And then after the launch, they are totally burnt out. It's because they're working in their masculine a lot. So just like in your business, it'll cause you to burn out. In your love life, it will burn out the flame burnout in the same ways. <laughs> so another thing that happens a lot I see is people, business women, strong, powerful women, putting off fixing their love life until they reach more success or feel ready. Okay. Those are some of the patterns that can be worked on so that you can get more success in your business and your love life. So how does this show up in your business or career? Well, you might find yourself only doing group programs and avoiding one-on-one -on -one coaching. You find yourself always doing more in your business. Like I said earlier, posting all the time, over giving, over delivering to, well, you, you want to over deliver, just more over giving to your clients. Maybe if you're in a career, you find yourself climbing the corporate ladder at the expense of the team. Or you might find yourself putting off investing in another coaching program until you have more money. So these are some of the patterns that if you don't reverse engineer them, you're going to stay stuck. And that applies whether it's your love life or your business. So how do we change this? We break the patterns, right? That keep giving you the same old results, unfulfilled in your marriage or relationships or stuck at the same level in your business. And it's about unlearning everything you believe to be true about love and discovering what is the secret to a truly harmonious and satisfying relationship. So I have to say love is an area that we're left on our own to figure this out a lot of times, right? Just like, you know, just like they don't teach you finance in school, how to invest your money for the most part, right? In school, this is another area that a lot of times we're left on our own and left to figure it out. So the faster that you can realize this and how it's impacting your love life and your business, then the faster that you can get these results that are just waiting for you. You have it in you. It's about accessing it. And a lot of focus is going on other areas and we're, we're suppressed in love because of it. All right, so I've just gone through the three ways that I changed this. So there are a few other ways, obviously, that I talk about in my group containers. I'm going to just take a minute to talk about that. This has been a lot of information and there is a lot more to it. But are you starting to see why you don't need to put your love life on hold to prioritize your business? Because it's all connected at the end of the day. I hope I really connected those dots for you and you could see where the correlations are, right? So let's see if we can see me a bit more. Oh, now we can see me. So if this all makes sense to you, there are two ways to work with me. Number one, my group program called Relationship Queens and number two, through private mentorship. So here are the details of my program. I take you through my happily ever after method, which includes the information that we talked about today. So you can instantly start experiencing shifts in the way men, your husband or partner, and consequently clients start responding to you. And 
there are a few more steps in there too that we didn't cover today. And through the program, you get weekly Zoom calls with me and the other ladies in the group and access to Facebook community so you can ask questions anytime and get the answers you need along the way as we're going so that you're never stuck, right? You know what to do and you can get those results faster. And of course, if you're more comfortable in a private mentorship container, that's an option. So the Zoom calls are just with me on a weekly basis and you have direct Voxer access to me. So hit me up in the DMs and let's see if we are a great fit to work together. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you ladies next time. Bye for now.